Tell them where you at. You go over First Kings chapter eighteen. First Kings chapter eighteen, and give me the twenty-first verse. So, like I was saying, with um, with with this city, some brothers, you know, they they, they wrote me emails and they come help, please. Like I give a damn about a nigga. <laughs> some of y'all don't like that. I don't give a damn about a nigga. Y'all heard what I said? Okay, you can stand up and talk to me about it. You know, tonight we got mic stands right there in the middle of the middle of the. Sir, why you don't give a damn about niggas? And why do you have to call them niggas? <laughs> well, because they niggas. <laughs> I happen to know what the word mean. And I use it appropriately. It's not a racial term. Um, not when I use it. You know, he saw call you a nigga and, you know, it'd be racist, you know. <laughs> but, you know, I, I know what I'm talking about, okay? I'm talking about a word uh, connected with a word that nobody know nothing about, which is niggardness. And, of course, some of you probably did your little research and probably tried to find some little Edomite that you don't know nothing about. You could have dropped out of kindergarten. And you damn read some commentary where some, somebody you don't even know, some unknown author told you that nigger and niggard is not related. So now you're going to believe that, right? Of course you are. Because <laughs> that's what you do. But it is. Okay? It's niggardness. Scriptures tell you don't be it at the table, Okay? <laughs> I mean, don't grab a biscuit with your fist and break the damn crumb, the crust of the, the you know. <laughs> That's what that means. It means the way you act. You got bad manners. You vulgar and rude. Disrespectful. Everybody understand that? Now, somebody that has bad manners against God, disrespectful against God. Or towards God. Explain to me why you think I should give a damn about a person like that. Now I have to ask you that question. I have to ask you that question. And let me tell you something about the God that I, I, I happen to know. Because I happen to know every word of God. Every word of it. Every iota. And every tittle. I know it. So let me explain something to you about what he said. About even one of the prophets that felt, he felt so much compassion for the, for the people that was being wicked. And he prayed to God. Know what God said? Know what God said to that prophet? Ask me no more questions concerning them that perish. The only thing I'm concerned with from now on is the righteous. You want to ask me something? Ask me about how they're going to be saved. We want to waste our time on nothing. On waste of time. I'm not wasting my time. You don't believe that this is the truth? Why are you here? You think I don't know what's going to happen? You're the one that don't know what's going to happen. I know what's going to happen. That's why I tell you, you don't believe? Get up and go. Somebody needs your seat. The book of 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 21. Read that for me, please. And Elijah came unto all the people. Read that one more time. And Elijah came unto all the people. Come on. And said. Come on. How long? What? How long? What? How long? What? How long? Come on. Hold ye between two opinions. Yeah, how long are you going to be sitting there holding two opinions? Huh? This is the truth or this not the truth? Should I be in this or should I do that? Is this right? Maybe this not right. Is that really God's name? Maybe it's not his name. Read that one more time for me, please. Verse 21. Come on. And Elijah came unto all the people. Come on. And said, Come on. How long hold ye between two opinions? You have to make your mind up right now. If your mind is not made up, now the Lord is putting you on the spot. Make your mind up. If you don't know that this is the truth, it's time to get up and go. That's what it is. It's time to go. You, ain't, you don't belong here if you don't know it's the truth. You're in the wrong place. Don't sit there with two dots in your head. I'm perplexed. With, with. Like I said, please explain to me what you're confused about. 
Because this is easy for me. This was easy from the first day that I heard it when I was 15 years old. Could Nobody couldn't tell me nothing then, and they damn sure can't tell me nothing now. My grandfather tried to tell me something, I ain't let him tell me nothing. My father tried to take me and talk to me and tell me something, I ain't let him tell me nothing. I was 15. <laughs> And nobody definitely can't try. They don't even try. People don't even try to tell me nothing now. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't have that problem no more. Nobody take me to the side and whisper negativity in my ear. That you know, just don't happen. I guess I must have got a reputation or something. <laughs> People must know what's going to follow. <laughs> but you still got two thoughts? It's plain to me what you confused about. I don't know. God might not be black. Well, what color he might be? <laughs> Did you ever say, I don't know, God might not be white? Did you ever question that? <laughs> because it ain't like they wasn't putting out there that there was a color about God. It only becomes an issue when that color is black. That's when it becomes a topic of debate now. Well, why does it matter? Because you said he was white. That's why it matters. And that's a lie. It's wrong. But why do we have to discuss color? Because you colored him in. That's why. If you never did it, we won't be talking about it. And you colored him the wrong color. Okay? And you ain't confused on that. There's nothing in the Bible that even remotely tell you, that even remotely appears as if God was white. If anything, you're going to make him dark as hell. <laughs> Get burnt in the oven. I mean, come on. That don't come out white, brother. <laughs> so stop it. You got deliber you li deliberately lying against God, and then you try to find some, some something wrong with it. Well, why, why everybody got to be black? I don't know. Jeremiah 14, 2 might not be talking about the Jews. Then what is it talking about? Huh? Some idiot that dropped out of kindergarten, right? What he said, right? Oh, that means that they was on the ground. Huh? Right? Now, we know it already told us Judah morning. Okay, so we understood they was in mourning right there. They are black unto the ground. Now, how did that mean that they mourning too? And why would the author write that that way? Judah mourneth. Judah mourneth. <laughs> why would he do that? <laughs> Leave it up to an Israelite to just believe what anybody say. That's why God called you, the ones of you that do that, he called you simple. The simple believes every word. You will pick up a book and you will just believe. You don't need, no research on who wrote that damn book. And the internet, oh my God. <laughs> Lord have mercy on the internet. You will type in a word and get a whole encyclopedia of information and indoctrinate yourself with lies. Inaccurate information. And be like, where you found that out, bro? Oh, the internet. Who qualified whoever to blog, you know, to write that other madness that they wrote? Huh? It was in Wikipedia. <laughs> oh, yeah? Who edited the information and put it up? Huh? Who updated the information, huh? Huh? If you was uh, famous enough, I guess, <laughs> to be in Wikipedia for somebody to write something about you, you'll see how much they lie. Like, damn, nobody ain't come and interview me. It's a whole article here. <laughs> Who lying that don't know me? But you will believe it. You will believe anything coming from anybody but God. But God. When it comes to God, when it comes to, when it comes to, if I may borrow this, when it comes to this Bible, then all of a sudden, now you become an expert student. You the master researcher. Now you're questioning who wrote this, <laughs> right? When it comes to the Bible, who wrote that? So what did God say? Read it one more time. First Kings 18, on. 21. Read it one more time. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, how long hold ye between two opinions? How long you going to have two opinions? The scripture says, let every man be fully persuaded in their own mind. You know? Either this is the truth or this is not the truth. 
in your mind. Don't come to me crying and saying you don't know if this is the truth. Because <laughs> the only counsel you're going to get, well, sister, this ain't for you. You know how many people done came to me and sat and, and we done spoke and they was like, I don't know if I'm in the right place. I said, well, maybe you're not. <laughs> Next. <laughs> See, understand my existence. I'm, he I'm, only, I'm only here for believers. Understand why I'm here. I'm here. Listen, understand. I, I, I have been informed by God that I'm here to teach people that believe. I have no time for unbelief. Absolutely none. Whatsoever. Real good. I talked to you for a minute. I'm just saying, I got a question. No, you ain't. You can't, you can't ask me a damn thing. Unless I feel like playing with you, you can't ask me nothing. <laughs> Read it one more time. And Elijah came unto all the people. And said, how long hold ye between two opinions? But the pastor think that approach is wrong because you can save a soul. See, when you don't be concerned, they could be driven away. Well, let me tell you something about a tittle you have no idea about. That's going to be fulfilled. Every spirit that's coming to God is already in God the Father's hand. And can't no man pluck them out. There's nothing that anybody on this earth can do to chase away a true believer. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. But unbelievers, <laughs> they get offended quick. You be like, damn, brother, tie your shoe. What? What? I'm tired of this. Sir. You think you're talking to I? Y'all ain't right up in there. Ain't no love. <laughs> Shemai, how can we be Shemai, bro? You just know Shemai, huh? An unbeliever going to rise up fast. See, and, and, and when you study Christ, when you know Christ, you realize that he actually did things to make unbelievers rise up. Why? Because he didn't want them around. You shall eat my flesh and drink my blood. Unbelievers jumped up. <laughs> what? Man, teaching cannibalism up in there. <laughs> we out of here. Nobody that's righteous want wickedness around. God the Father. And we're going to read that tonight. Let me ask you a question. What do you think is wicked around him? Absolutely nothing. There's a passage in the book of Job that talks about heaven. You know what it says about heaven? In that place, the wicked cease from troubling. You know why? Because they're not there. <laughs> wicked niggas ain't walking around heaven. <laughs> you know, this ain't right. These clouds and stuff. <laughs> this ain't right. Why? He got six wings and stuff. It's wicked as hell up here. <laughs> the Lord ain't dealing with that, brother. Wickedness is not around him. Why are you, out of all the wickedness we have to deal with, have to, because we can't control it. We can't control it on our jobs. We can't control it when we go in the grocery store. We can't control it when we in our cars and the nigga is road raging. Out of all the wickedness you have to deal with, why do you put up with wickedness that you don't have to deal with? That you can control. What's going on with you? That you're allowing this to happen. 